Sure. Nine Inch Nails. Look, I don't have a drum machine here. Yeah. I'm doing the best I can. Right. There's no um, acapella first, Nine Inch Nails. First up, um, if you like procrastinating, um, you can do that. It's fine. Uh, but you might have to give a gift. So give an Adafruit gift certificate. You can print out these cool things. We made this, like, it looks like hologram looking money. And uh, it's the gift that gives. So you can get an Adafruit gift certificate. It is quite popular. Yeah. Because you don't, there's so many products, you don't know exactly what somebody wants. That's right. You just, just print it out and give it to them, and they'll be like, thank you, that's exactly what I wanted. So you could do that. Um, but as far as physical things, that okay. you can buy right now, a button. A button. <laughs> this is a uh, NFC and tag button. So mm. it's a uh, NFC tag, an RFID tag, that has two holes in it so it can be sewn on. It's actually kind of designed to be a laundry button. So you can uh, sew it onto like a laundry bag and then that's how they identify oh, the bag, right. you know, because it, it stays with it and you can launder, you know, it or you can, you know, attach to some fabric thing. Yeah. Um, so it actually can survive uh, very hot water, it survives like 200 washes, but it's also just handy because it's very durable. And again, it has these two holes that make it easy to mount it to something. So it's an NTAG, I think 213, I don't exactly remember, but uh, it's a kind of modern NFC tag. You can store some data in it. Uh, and then read it with a yeah. wireless so reader. 13.56 megahertz RFID and NFC. Mm -hmm. Solo button NTAG213. Yeah, and dead. All right. Uh, we have a USB C right angle adapter. This does yeah. exactly what you think. I needed one of these. Yeah, you want it to go up, you want to go down because it's reversible. Don't forget, you can go either way. You can yeah. go left or right, unlike m most USB adapters, which you have to have one of each. Uh, this is just the right angle adapter. It connects, there's no electronics inside of the wires. So you can use it with whatever USB-C device you want. It just connects all the pins from one end to the other. That's it, straight through. Yeah, all right, more buttons. Mm, so we have these fun buttons. Um, this is a five pack of buttons that are stomach compatible. They have a JST pH connector on them and they come with wires as well. So it's kind of a full pack and it means you can do a solder free mountable um, button interface. And I'll show them on the overhead because they're kind of, they're, they're low cost, but you know what? They work really well. So each button has a cap. You get one of you get five different colors. I think it's white, yellow, red, blue, black, and then on this side, you get a, a connector that uh, plugs in very nicely and securely. Here, you can remove it, but it it stays nice and solid. And then you can plug it into a breadboard or your Arduino or whatever you want. And uh, it's like a like a six to eight inch long cable. Um, just means that you can have like a, a button on a cable uh, quite easily. Um, and you have little mounting holes as well. Uh, there's even a pull-up resistor here. So if you uh, connect the red wire to the voltage you want to the, have the pull-up to, when you uh, have the button open, the signal wire will be at this voltage pulled up. When you press the button, um, the signal wire goes to ground just like any other tactile button. And like I said, you get a pack of five. So, you know, it's handy, I think, when you want to build interfaces that are off of breadboard. Yeah, and one thing this is good for Team Particle is um, because you went with Feather and Featherwing, you get all the things that are Stemma compatible mm -hmm. that go on top. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things we did was we looked around and we're like, okay, there's Grove, there's Quick, there's Gravity. And we had a Stemma uh, connection system that we wanted to, but we wanted to make sure it was the most compatible. Mm -hmm. So if you have a Particle and you use a Feather with a Stemma connector, you can use any Grove things, you can use Quick, you can use Gravity. Absolutely. So, like more stuff, and you've probably seen like there's there's enough of these sensors out there. Absolutely. Yeah. That and a lot of people don't want to solder, even if right. you're even if you're in like a um, a startup where you're doing hardware, like you're you're just looking to quickly like almost Lego yeah. something together. Yeah. We've seen that as well. A lot of people just they want to not want to mess with jumper wires, not necessarily ready to start yeah. soldering yet, but get something they can plug in quickly and go. So we'll yeah. have we'll have a bunch more stuff, and we're working on a bunch of cool stuff. Wait, okay. What else you got, Lady Ada? Next up, there's this neat motor. Um, so it's a DC geared motor, it's a 1 to 20 motor, uh, so it's geared down, so that's quite nice, it's, it's nice and, and strong, uh, it doesn't go that fast, I think it's about 400 RPM max uh, with 7 volt power, but you can give it 5 volt power and it works uh, well as, with that as well, and you can PWM it with an H bridge, and what's neat is on the end is a uh, magnetic encoder wheel, mm. and two Hall effect sensors, and a cable, so again this makes it really easy to do uh, encoder-based motor projects. So we have motors, but a lot of the low-cost motors don't have an encoder, and so you don't know how fast they're going or which direction they're spinning. As you start doing more and more robotics, that becomes important. So um, sorry, over here, let me show this. So on the end here, you have this free-spinning 
uh, wheel, and then here are the two uh, magnetic sensors. What's nice is, you know, no matter what uh, the temperature is or what the light level is, these will always work. Uh, they don't get dirty like um, optical encoders. So if you plug this in here, I've got my uh, Feather M4, uh, and it's connected to this motor driver, which uh, has an H bridge, which is controlling the motor direction and speed. You can see it spinning. And then I have the two encoder wires coming out and connecting to GPIO on the Feather through this uh, Feather coupler. And then uh, the OLED is printing out the speed. So as I spin up the motor, it goes faster and faster. You can see I can calculate the RPM kind of up to about 400 and then it slows down and then it'll spin the other direction. So it's one nice thing about having uh, two encoders is you can tell both the direction and the speed. Um, and this lets you do much more advanced control. Um, and if you have two motors, you can drive straight because you, you can tell cool. the speed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is like, I, I'm just looking at this. Of course you can just pop on a particle and now you're do, you're either transmitting this stuff or you're controlling it. Like that's, yeah. that's, mm -hmm. a, that's a smart And you can use this as a model. I mean, what this, are these referred to? I haven't no, really these are encoder them. motors. Yeah. So it's nice Start that the encoder is just already on the back. You don't have to, usually you have to um, add this on or you're spending a lot, but these are only, you know, like, you know, 12, 13 bucks, and oh, it basically yeah. comes with everything ready to go. So this is a, a nice little, and then of course, you know, you can unplug this cable. So uh, you can mount this as you desired and then uh, reattach the cable when you're okay. ready. So. Question was, uh, can the gearbox be removed from the gear DC motor with the mag encoder? Yeah, I mean, it looks like it bolts on. I haven't done it, but this is clearly the motor and this is clearly the gearbox. It looks like yeah. you could probably remove it and then yeah, you're going to have to, I don't know what shaft is on the other end, but then this is, this is definitely the, the back end of it. But most people don't want an ungeared motor, you usually want it, and a 1 to 20 gearing is a pretty yeah. good amount. Yeah, you know, they're not that expensive, so it's probably worth experimenting, yeah. taking apart. And, okay. and if people like these, you know, I'll stock more. Uh, this is just something I wanted to, uh, to start yeah, with. Yeah, this is cool. All right, so there you go. So now you've got uh, some precision motor action. Mm -hmm. All right. Motor encoder. Next up. You have a feather wing. So this is not on purpose, it's quite it's feather night. but it is feather night. Um, Scott actually wanted this because he's doing so much e-ink stuff with CircuitPython that I was like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll get you one of these. It's a, uh, one of like our e-ink friends, but instead of a breadboard friendly, it's meant to go on a feather and it works with all of our feathers. It uses SPI and a couple GPIO and on the overhead you can see live. You can connect it to these low cost, but very popular uh, e-ink displays that have a standard 24 pin connector. They're, what's thankful is they all use the same connector pin out. So whether you're using like the one inch ones or the four and a half inch ones or even the seven inch ones, uh, they all have the same connector. We have a pretty good power supply on here, SD card if you want to uh, display images like here. And uh, for the devices, the feathers that don't have a lot of RAM, we have a built-in SPI SRAM chip you can use to buffer the display because one thing about e-inks is that mm -hmm. you have to write the entire display at once uh, so this is like you write it and then you tell it okay refresh and then you go into shutdown mode and then you can't read pixels out and you can't read write just one pixel you have to write the entire display at once um, that's pretty common but uh, that said it's you know very easy to attach any e-ink display and you can start experimenting with uh, e-ink configuration using your feather so it's a feather friend yeah the other thing i like is this shows up when we do circuit python stuff it just shows up as a drive and you just drag and drop that maps mm -hmm. um which is not normal like normally it's complicated and terrible to do e ink stuff and like you're you're compiling things but just dragging dropping an image and then it just shows up as kind of nice so we got that going on okay next up we have coming soon it's a giant hand with it, a giant phone oh, no. no it's a small <laughs> house with a standard hand a standard phone so these are uh the digikey iot smart home kits and you can uh, use DigiKey IoT Studio which we have a guide that we published on yeah. uh, that's it's coming out very soon and uh, we'll also do a video on how to use uh, DigiKey oh, IoT Studio, Studio with a yeah. bunch of different feathers uh, to read sensors, send them to the cloud, use um, their mobile app creator to do either Bluetooth low energy data or Wi-Fi data transmission. Uh, so this kit's going to be coming out soon, uh, but you can sign up if you're interested. It kind of has everything you need. There's a little bit of soldering required because you're going to have to attach the feathers to header and then plug them in. Oh, is that uh, a little door sensor? Yeah, there's a door oh, sensor. Cool. Uh, there's a HVAC fan. Um, there's a relay, so you can control the fan with the relay. 
Uh, there's a temperature sensor and a motion sensor, uh, an air quality, humidity, barometric pressure, uh, and air quality gas sensor. So it's kind of like an all-in-one home IoT kit, but you don't have to mess with your home. You just mess with this small house. Okay. Big and small news tonight. Yes. We have the Pi Portal Titano and the Pi Portal Pint. So people like the Pi Portal, which we released about right. a year ago. Uh, big and now small. Small, big and small. Okay. So we'll show all three of them because there's there's yeah. three in the actual I was gonna I was gonna show, I was just gonna show the big one and then I was gonna like one more thing. One more thing. And then like the little one. <laughs> but um, you know, I just skipped it, it's fine. So uh, I'll show them on the overhead. So there's now three different pipe portals and I'll explain the differences between them. So um, this is the original pipe portal. So the pipe portal pint is actually the easiest to understand. It's actually the same exact hardware, just smaller. This is a 3.2 inch screen, this is a 2.4 inch screen. It's the same chip, it's the same Wi-Fi, it's the same SD card. The only thing we took out was the temperature sensor. Um, so just isn't on the I squared C bus, but everything else is identical. So the code that you run is identical. Like if you have a UF2 or CircuitPython code, it's exactly the same because it's the same resolution, same chip, same everything. So the pint is just, it's just shrink grade down, yeah. but otherwise identical display driver and orientation and all that good stuff. Um, the Pi Portal Titano is a little bit different because to get a larger screen, we, uh, updated the display to be a 3.5 inch TFT, which is 320 by 240 instead of, sorry, it's 480 by 320, not 320 by 240. So it's actually twice as many pixels. And you can actually kind of see that because on here, you see the text is a little bit blocky, like you can actually see the, the pixels. And here, I actually am using a larger font, but the pitch of the pixels is much finer. So the, you don't see the pixels as much because they're closer together and it has a smoother look. Although for some reason it looks like it's, it's not actually flickering in real life, it's just the, the camera makes it look yeah. like it's flickering, but it's looking fine to me. Um, and there's a Trent Reznor quote, so that's, that's on brand. Um, so when you write code for this, the Wi-Fi chip is the same and the processor is the same, and the, you know, the buzzer is the same, but the b display is a little bit different. So when you have graphics, like I had to redo this background graphic, instead of 320 by 240, I had to redraw to be 320 by 480. So you have to redo your graphics to be larger, otherwise they'll only take up like this part of the screen because they actually are higher resolution graphics. And we upgraded it to be a USB-C connector. So yeah. that's kind of Everyone says, what about USB-C? We did it. So yeah, this, was one, this one, the Pipe Portal Pint's actually a little bit older. We didn't quite get that out till now. Yeah. But uh, the USB-C is what we're using on our, our modern boards. And yeah, it's, it's a much nicer, larger screen. But trade-off is uh, you're gonna have to redo your graphics to account for the larger screen. Okay, and then on on your wrist, someone said, can you put the pint above your wrist just to show like roughly what size that is? Like that? Yeah. It's, so you're not a large person. It's but wrist it, size. Yeah. This is my hand. So this is the pint. This is the pie portal. Yeah. And this is the Titano. Yeah. So, and then we have yeah. an image. The pint is quite small. Yeah, so, you know. It's a small screen we could get with that that still had a touch screen. Python powered wireless, all in those different sizes. And uh, with that, okay. with that is uh, this new product. Yay! Okay, do you want to? Yes.